Um, joining us to talk about that, reactions to why it was there in the first place, uh, and where he's going to go next, actually, I guess, is the co-chair of Toropo, uh, and that is Eugene Berryman Kemp, and he joins us now. Um, sorry, Eugene, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you on. Have I got your name right, Eugene Berryman Kemp? Yes, more fair enough. Yes, completely right there. Thank you for that. And that's, no, sorry, it's just that it was written wrong, and I'm, I was just thinking, nah, nobody's called Kemp, it's Kemp. Um, you wouldn't be a relation of the famous Kemp, would you, um, from Wanganui, or fame, you know? No, the, no, no, no relation no, at all. I'm, <clears throat> no, I'm not. That uh, name comes from my uh, wife's side. Uh, they were Dutch, but a completely different side of the, fa of ah. the family. Okay. No, I grew up with one of the Kemp's, obviously. I think he had the first VC, didn't he? It was for, fighting in the Maori Wars or something. Um, anyhow, okay. Tell me why Toropo was set up in the first place, please. Oh, yes, Sandy. Look, um, Toropo was established, and as you had outlined just in your preamble there, there was a review of Pharmac which started in 2021. Um, part of that ended up with a response from Pharmac in 2022. Toropo was established to provide Māori leadership and high level guidance and advice to the board and to the senior leadership team, uh, particularly with a um, getting equitable health outcomes in terms of pharmaceuticals, but also, of course, Pharmac are moving into medical devices as well. Okay. Um, why were there inequitable outcomes for Māori, or was it considered as such? Because I would have thought that you got access to Pharmac services irrespective of whatever ethnicity you were. Oh, look, there's a number of reasons why people uh, have a difficulty accessing certain medications. Yes, whilst the um, uh, system does involve, you know, you get a prescription from your GP, you go to your pharmacist, you pick your medications up. However, of course, uh, if you're uh, in a position where you're either not able to see your GP or not able to pay the uh, prescription copay pay payment, or if you have access I I issues where you, you live somewhere where there's not a farm a ph pharmacy, those sort of things can provide a ba ba barrier. But also how pharmaceuticals are used and how medications are used. And I guess maybe one example that I can share that we're aware of is um, uh, older Māori men in terms of um, accessing diuretics. Now, just for clarity, diuretics obviously are um, medications to enable, well, if you're retaining water, Mm. diuretics help you expel that so obviously the uh, objective of that pharmaceutical intervention is that you go to the bathroom now one of the issues for some of our older Māori men particularly those who fulfill cultural roles on the pai pai at the marae is it is the height of um, uh, bad taste and inappropriateness to leave um, when you are in a formal pōhiri or if you're at uh, tangi or something like that. So we did get cases of men not taking their diuretics so they didn't have to go to the bathroom when they were fulfilling their cultural obligations. That's just one example where actually there can be a difficulty. Now, of course, there's a couple of ways to resolve that issue. One is to not fulfil your cultural duty or the other one is to make available diuretics and treatment regimes, which mean that you can work around that. And that was the inequity that stood out. Well, oh, mm. that is an okay, example. Okay, but what I'm hearing here, yep, but what I'm hearing here is that, gosh, I could think about that playing a game of golf, just be quiet, you know, I don't want to come in from the 12th to use the toilet either. Um, so what I'm hearing here, though, is that these aren't necessarily culture, uh, specific to Maori, aren't they? they? They would be across a range of groups and, 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 and folk. Um, why would you need a special group to advise Pharmac? Wouldn't they be, wouldn't they be aware that there might be a cultural reason as to why you wouldn't prescribe a diuretic? Well, there's two things with that. Number one, knowing there's a cultural reason to um, to look at the use of a diuretic. The second <laughs> one is, of course, 
working out how to resolve that and make it easier for people to access. So um, that's it. And there are distinct groups for that. That is one example. And there's a whole lot of other examples across different medications where either physical access to the medication or understanding of the medication. So the information that is provided, is that provided in a way um, that Māori can uh, understand and work through to be able to get the benefit of the medications that they're on it's quite a specified group and of course as you'll be aware maori are overrepresented in a number of the uh, negative health statistics therefore having a focus group to be able to advise on that increases your chances increases your your availability or uptake of those medications Eugene, how many of there were you on Tairupu? How many um, advisors, so to speak? Did you have your own staff or were you just a sort of a governance advisory group? Uh, governance advisory group made up of eight members. So there were uh, four doctors, a pharmacist, a policy specialist, a uh, my particular background and my co-chair, Rebecca Mason, her background is from the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, both of us worked here and in the UK in that background and, co and are involved in final order collectives. So it was a range of expertise, but there was eight of us as an advisory. So no staff, no budget, no decision making powers. OK, you all got paid though, I assume. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah. Um, OK. So uh, yesterday, um, Paula Bennett makes this announcement. According to the announcement was made yesterday, you were told a month ago that this was coming. Um, so it came as no surprise to you, I take it. Were you given the opportunity to say no? Uh, no, we weren't. Just for clarity, the Pharmac board made the decision, uh, I think, in the um, August meeting. We were informed on the 18th of October but we were informed that the board was going to be disestablishing the board. It wasn't a negotiation or a discussion. It was uh, informed that the that Tarupu will be disestablished. Okay, and and this, presumably the the theory being, well, you've served your purpose. Uh, we don't need you anymore. Pharmac um, understands what you've been doing. Tada! Is that is that is that it? Oh the. Uh, my understanding, Pharmac are looking at exploring other, other ways of getting specific Māori advice into the decision-making process. They're looking at working with the four Māori professional bodies, so general practice, pharmacy, hospital doctors, um, the Iwi Māori partnership boards, which have just been established to um, provide um, understanding at more of a local and regional level level of health needs and also the Ho Order Māori Advisory Committee, although my understanding that committee actually advises the Minister, it doesn't advise agencies. So my understanding is that Pharmac are looking to get their advice from those mechanisms. All right. Um, now, there'd be a lot of people listening to this, particularly those who live in rural areas in this country who have exactly the same problems as Māori, you say Māori do, in terms of accessing primary health services and uh, pharmaceuticals as well, um, who would be going, well, what's special about Māori? Can you explain that to me? What, what makes you different than and those needs in particular with, say, uh, rural folk who are living in isolated communities in New Zealand? Hmm. Oh, no, look, um, certainly that is the case. Um, rural, uh, the um, disabled community there's a number of segments of our society that have difficulty accessing the medications that they need um, i guess the layer that flows over the top of that is that um, pharmac uh, as a health entity and this was outlined in the uh, response to the review in 2022 um, the pie or Order Act, which was passed in, if I remember correctly, 2022, um, has specific expectations on health entities, including Pharmac, to address inequity and there are treaty obligations that needed to be worked through. So acknowledging there are a number of high need groups 
but because of their statutory obligations, um, there's an extra layer that health entities have to do to ensure that they are doing their utmost to improve Māori health equity. Um, in July, Associate Health Minister David Seymour told Pharmac it was inappropriate for that agency to keep considering the Tariti's uh, place in the health sector. Did that permeate through to you as well? 